Hello there and welcome to the video. So this year it feels like the winter has been especially dark, grey and gloomy. And when we finally got some snow, it turned into chaos. And I haven't really been out and photographed as much as I like to. But finally there was a break in the weather forecast, on a day when I was free. And I also had some film in my fridge that I've never shot before, some FOMA retro pan on 4x5. So I decided to pack up my camera bag and head up to the northwest corner of Skåne, or Skania, to a place called Kullaberg. It's a super popular tourist spot and a super popular spot among locals as well, especially during the spring, summer and autumn. But on our first day in January, it's a different story. Let's head out into the field. So it's been a minute or two since last time I was out photographing. I wanted to make it easy on myself, so I kind of scouted this location using Google Maps beforehand. You know those little interest pins you can find? I kind of spotted this. It's a beach hut that sits among the rocks on this uh, well, rocky seaside here. And it looks spectacular. In theory, it's quite an easy photograph. In practice, it turned out to be quite tricky. Due to these very good looking uh, rock formations here, it's hard to find a position where you can put a tripod. Some of the rocks are really slippery and they are kind of limited where you can put the camera. If you go in handheld, you won't have that problem. But as I'm shooting large format, there was a bit of a limitation. But it's kind of my, what makes photography fun for me. And I do think I found quite a nice composition uh, we have like uh, this little bay where the waves crash against the uh, rocks here, creating some drama in the foreground. And then we have like this staggered rock formation and, uh, and the beach up, up on the left, like third of frame. And this was actually just a warm up location. Uh, I'm going to head back to the car and we're going to drive a bit further out on this like half island, this peninsula here, and uh, start exploring a bit more proper. So I don't have any more spots. Scouted, I just have this general area I want to explore where I like to go about photography normally. But it's nice to sometimes just take an easy image. First image of Retropan, and it sure has a look to it. Not sure about it yet. We'll save that for later. But as you might notice, this image is out of focus. That's down to me. I lost focus. I made a beginner's mistake. I say I lost focus. I didn't miss focus. Because I did focus on the building itself. And that is sharp. But the depth of field isn't enough to cover what I needed to cover. What I should have been doing was to focus on the rocks in front of the building. Then it would probably be enough and made for at least a better image. And to be honest, I'm not completely sold on the composition itself. It lacks something. But I'm not afraid of some cropping, and cropping this to a 6x12 image works a lot better. It's a shame it isn't sharp. If only someone was, let's say, a bit unsure of his exposure metering and wanted to share it with his digital camera. Yeah, I did a digital image of this scene as well. And cropping that to a 6x17, I do think we have a winner on our hands. I might just have to get myself 
a 6x17 camera in the future. After that image, I decided to drive about 20 minutes up to the very tip of the half island in this nature preserve. To the main parking lot, an area I try to avoid because it's always so crowded. But in January, on a Thursday, it is a different story. So I'm actually going to change boots. Uh, my bean boots that I've been using for this little first leg, they're fine for like the local woodlands and stuff like that. But um, we were kind of slippery on those rocks and we are going to continue climbing on some rocks uh, as we explore this uh, area here a bit more some proper exploration. So I'm going to switch over from my bean boots over to my to my more like proper hiking boots and these are my Lundhax. I can't remember the name but it's a Swedish brand. They make nice hiking boots and uh, the soles have a lot of more friction and more traction so it's better for climbing on rocks. So as you saw, I changed my boots because I anticipated it being quite slippery here. That hasn't been the case at all. It's been quite nice walking paths and it's a nice day out today. Uh, clear blue sky and nice sun. And I found an image. Not at all what I wished I would be photographing today. I'm photographing a tree, quite typical of me. And uh, it's this tree here. It's quite a good looking tree. And I have it set against the quite dark blue sky there. We have the sun over there and then we have this quite dark, nice background here. And I'm quite careful because I wanted it to clear the rock there so it has this clear background. I had to move around quite a bit to find that composition. And on top of that we have all these quite like dead branches and trees here. I thought it looked interesting but it turned out to be mostly just a mess. So I kept moving closer and closer and closer until I focus in on that tree and one of the dead trees. And I do think this composition might work quite nice. It's quite tricky to expose uh, because it's quite harsh light, even though we're in the winter time and we do have this nice winter light here in, in Scandinavia. But uh, still quite harsh lighting. So I did bracket the shots. I did one exposure at uh, f22 and one at f16 and both at 1 100th of a second. And I'm still shooting Retropan. I do have one sheet left of that and one sheet of Delta. So we'll try and find at least one more scene to photograph today. Second image on Retropan. I would like to mention two things. Firstly, I started to warm up to the look of it. Speaking of which, film actually recommend that you print this on a warm based paper. I haven't been able to try that yet, as I still need to renovate my darkroom. However, I did add some warmth in the computer on the digital scans of the film. And it does work quite well. And secondly, you might have noticed I flipped this image horizontal. I did that because I feel it works a bit better. In its original orientation, I feel like the eye kind of follow the tree and fall off the image straight away. But by flipping it, you kind of stop at the crown and start exploring the image. I feel like it works a bit better. I do have a philosophy when it comes to editing analog images on the computer. I only do edits I could replicate in the darkroom. And you can flip an image in the darkroom.
another image on another cliff edge. It is quite a curious location, this one, but it is beautiful. And I just finished off my last sheet that I had loaded for this little outing. And I'm shooting Delta. And I'm not shooting 4x5. I'm actually shooting 9x12, 9x12 centimeters. It's an old European standard. And it's a different aspect ratio. Instead of 4x5, it's 4x3, which I actually prefer. But there's only two manufacturers, at least two manufacturers I can get hold of, that still makes film for that format. And those are Ilford and Foma. Another reason why I like Foma so much as a manufacturer. But then again, I could just crop your four, the 4x5 four inches to 9x12 centimeters. Yeah, anyhow, <laughs> about the image. I'm shooting in a building once again. We have this uh, small little cabin that sits amongst the cliffs here. It looks quite spectacular. And I just want to take an image of that. However, I did the opposite I did on the last image. Instead of moving closer to simplify the image, I had to move backwards. Because there's a couple of dead trees and they kept interfering with the building. And I needed to get either higher or to the right. Both impossible. Higher, I was already on the po uh, highest point. And to the right, there's this big drop. So I had to move backwards and to the right. And that, of course, introduced more foreground subjects, which I ended up liking. So much so that I put on the wide angle to emphasize those foreground elements. There's one problem, though, and that's I'm pushing the film and its dynamic range. I have the sun over there, kind of backlighting me, and it's light on this side of the cliff. So I have this nice little V-shape with the building in the middle there. And one side is uh, quite bright and the other is in shadow. So that is quite a stark contrast there. And I'm not sure if the film will be able to handle it or if it will look good in an image. But as always, I am quite hopeful. If it works out, I do think the composition works. So it might be a shot for another day if this one doesn't turn out. Final image of the day on Delta this time. And I'm pleased to report the dynamic range of the film was more than enough to capture this scene. It's still kind of a boring image though, but I'm okay with that. The thing is, especially on a location like this that is beautiful and spectacular, there's a lot of compositions to be had and you will leave some on the table and some of the photographs you do take will be misses. But I'm okay with that. For me, the experience is more important than the images themselves in most cases. How about Retropan then? Did I like the film? Short answer, yes. Yes, I did. With the small little caveat that this is the first time I ever shot it. I only made four exposures. I developed it in Kodak T-Max which is perhaps not the optimal developer for that film, but that was what I had at home. And well, the results, they are something else. They certainly have a look to it. And it's all in the name of the film. It's called Retropan Soft. It is very retro looking and it is quite soft contrast. But I do need to shoot more of it before I can give you a final conclusion. I'm quite certain I will enjoy shooting this film. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I see you in the next one. Do take care and bye.